Well, uh, like we said already, today is Connection Sunday. You know, for those of us that have been here a while, um, that call TFRC home, um, this is a powerful reminder for us today. This day matters for us. That um, God is actually still active in this place, if you know what I mean. God is actually moving in this place. God is doing something in this place. And new members uh, joining the church and people getting baptized is proof that God is moving. It's all God's work. This morning, um, 39 people are going to join the church. It's awesome. 39. Um, And that is kids and students and adults. And what they're going to do is they're going to stand up and they are going to declare in the presence of God and among us their faith publicly, that Jesus did rise from the dead, that this is a true story, that Jesus was born and grew up and did ministry and miracles and all of that. And that same Jesus was, was arrested and beaten and crucified and died and did all of that for the forgiveness of sins. That the death of Jesus wasn't the end of the story, but it was only the beginning of the story because Jesus rose again, right? Jesus was risen from the dead. And when Jesus rose again, he rose again as a king Jesus, right? He is the king of the world because he defeated death. You see, each of these 39 people that are joining the church today, they believe that story. They believe it. They believe that the story of Jesus is the true story um, in this world. And for some of these folks, this will be the first time that they've ever in public said something like that before. It's a really holy day for our church, especially for those that are going to be professing their faith. And then these same 39 people, after they profess their commitment to Jesus, they are going to profess their commitment to uh, Christ's one little slice of his church that we call TFRC. They're going to join us and say, we are family now. And then at the end of the service, um, another group of people, 26 people, um, if you add the two services together, we're going to meet outside at the fountain and they're going to get baptized, and they're going to do so in the name of Jesus. Folks, to me at least, this is proof that God is still active and moving in us and through us, and that, folks, is good news. It's good news, isn't it? It's great news. So today, our job, um, if you get to just be a bystander here in a sense, um, your job is to celebrate and to celebrate the best we can. God is at work. Now, before we um, get to the new member's piece, I want us to reflect on Scripture here for a moment. So if you have a Bible, I'm going to invite you to turn to the book of Acts. Um, It'll be Acts 2, verse 36 through 41, if you will turn there with me. Um, This passage, I think, is a great commentary on what is happening in this moment, on this day. Um, Our scripture reader this morning is uh, Kim Ruiz. Um, Kim, I'll invite you forward. You can head on up to read for us. Kim is actually one of our new members, which is kind of fun. What we do here at church is we stand, if you are able to, we face the center of the room for the reading of God's word, and we do so because this truly is the true story. This is it. This is the story above all others. Um, So Kim, when you're ready. Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. When the people heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, brothers, what shall we do? Peter replied, repent and be baptized, every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. With many other words he warned them and he pleaded with them, save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 were added to their number that day. Thank you, Kim. You may be seated. Um, Often when we turn to 
uh, Acts 2, which is something we do a lot here at TFRC. Um, we begin at Acts 2, 42. If you have your Bible, you can just turn there and flip there for a second. Um, and we turn to Acts 2, 42 for a reason. Um, that passage, Acts 2, 42, and the next couple of verses after, I think is just a beautiful picture of what the church um, is and what the church could be and what God is calling the church to to be. Um, and that passage actually has been incredibly important to the DNA of this place, of this community. Um, our scripture reading, however, um, begins the, the verse before that, which is kind of interesting, or sorry, it ends the verse before that. Our scripture reading this morning is the tail end of um, Peter's first sermon that he ever gave to uh, followers of Jesus. And if you look in your Bible, you can look back just like a page to your left and you can read the story of the Holy Spirit descending upon uh, the first Christians. And the Holy Spirit de de descends on this group of first Christians, and then chaos kind of breaks loose, and all the bystanders around are kind of confused about what in the world is going on. And so Peter decides, I need to stand up and I need to say something. And so he stands up and he starts speaking. And then he starts speaking about the story of Israel and how Jesus is the culmination of that story in so many ways. And then at the end, he invites people um, to, to do something with this news, with this Holy Spirit descending upon them, with all this stuff that's been going on. This is what's happening, Peter wants to say. Our scripture reading um, is kind of the last third of Peter's sermon. And at the end of this speech, Peter proclaims a couple things. He proclaims a new reality for the world in his uh, sermon. And then he invites the crowds to participate in that new reality. If you have your Bible, um, open to verse 36 a second. I want to read that for us. This is Peter. He says, Therefore, let all Israel be assured of this. God has made this Jesus whom you crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Now, Peter here isn't saying that God has invited us to make this Jesus whom we crucified, both Lord and Messiah. Peter is declaring that there is a new reality now. In this moment, there is a new reality for the whole world. When Jesus died on the cross, in that moment when he was raised from the dead, uh, God was up to something. God was doing something in that moment. You see, upon the resurrection of Jesus, Jesus became Lord and Messiah over all things. And if you think about that, that's actually a bold thing to say. Think about that. Right now, in our world, whether, whether you're one that believes in Jesus or you're not quite sure where you're at, maybe you're a skeptic, Peter says it doesn't really matter what you believe about it. Jesus is already king over this world. Already. This is reality. This is the real world, Peter says. Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. There's not a choice here. It's just simply the new reality that happened upon the resurrection of Jesus. Which means, if you think about it, it means in some sense it doesn't really matter what happens in the world and in our lives, whether we are healthy or whether we are sick, whether we think that the world is becoming a better place day after day after day, or, or whether we think the world is just getting worse and worse and darker and darker. It doesn't matter if the President of the United States has an R after his name or a D after his name. It doesn't really matter at the end of the day. It doesn't matter whether our kids have made us proud and they have followed Jesus and they've made good moral decisions or whether they really put flesh on the prodigal son story. It doesn't really matter in some sense because regardless of all of that, Jesus is Lord right now. It's the reality of our lives. Now Peter says, hey, this is the new reality. Whether you like it or not, Jesus is the king here these days. This is the truest reality. And then after proclaiming this new reality of King Jesus, Peter moves on to an invitation. Jesus is Lord and Messiah. And this Jesus is inviting us to participate in this new reality. Um, you actually hear Peter talk about this in verse 38 and on. If you have your Bible, you can turn there. It says, Peter replied, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, 
and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. It's those two main words in verse 38, repent and be baptized. Repentance and baptism. Repentance. In, in the original language, repentance, um, like today we think of it as, you know, we got to pick ourselves up by our bootstraps and make some better choices. Repentance was different from that. See, in the ancient world, repentance was you're walking a certain path. You're headed a certain direction. You have beliefs that go with that. You have a morality that goes with that. You have the way that you are in the world that goes with that. And Jesus says, now it's time to repent. And repenting literally meant this is your life, and now you need to turn, and now you need to go the other direction and live life differently. And the other direction is going to have different morals and a different way to see the world and a different way of being in the world. And Peter says, you are invited to repent because of this new reality. And then he says, oh, and also be baptized because of this new reality. We literally turn our lives around. We repent. We change direction and live a different life. And then Peter says, and also be baptized. Now, baptism has all kinds of meaning. It's a really rich practice in the church, in Scripture. There's a lot of ways to understand baptism. But in its most simplest form, I think, is that when you enter the baptismal waters and you go to get baptized, um, the water literally surrounds all of you in that moment. You know, at the end of this service, a bunch of people are going to get baptized. They're going to go into that fountain out there. And then we're going to baptize them, and they're going to get dunked, completely submersed in the water. And in the moment that they're completely underwater, there will not be a place where water is not around them. And it's, it's a great example or allusion to this new reality in Jesus. When, when we get baptized, the water surrounds us, but we are submersed not just in water, but we are submersed into a new reality where Jesus is king. That's what happens at baptism. We are completely surrounded by this new reality. You see, this is why today matters for our church. This morning, our new members will declare their faith. You could, you could argue it's an act of repentance, actually. And then many of them are going to enter the waters and they're going to be baptized. They're going to be completely immersed in the story of Jesus. They're going to find in that moment that their story, their story, has a place in Jesus' story. It's a great moment. And you see, all of this is proof that God continues to do something. God is up to something in our church. And friends, there are many churches today that are wondering, is God still doing something in this place? And we can say definitively, because of days like today, that God is actually doing something here. And that's good news, isn't it? It's an amazing news. God is up to something here. And we get to see God's fingerprints this morning. It's like what Peter says in verse 39 of our scripture reading. He says, The promise is for you and your children and for all who are far off, for all whom the Lord our God will call. And you see, God is calling people to repentance in him and then calling people to repentance in him in this faith community at TFRC. That's what God is doing. Amen? Amen? God, we thank you for those joining uh, the church and proclaiming their faith today, God. We thank you that some of the folks standing here um, hadn't done that before, and this is a first. God, you saw to it that they would come near you and come into our community, God. We ask for your holy hands to be over each of their lives, their marriages, their workplaces, their health, all of that stuff, God. Um, be with them. God, we ask that you uh, make your presence known to each of them in a tangible way, as often as you deem fit. God, make yourself known to each of them. God, we ask as they join this community that they may be welcome in, uh, welcomed in with open arms, that they may experience Jesus through this place, through the people uh, that make this church a church, God. And God, as TFRC looks forward um, stronger today, God, 
We ask um, humbly that you continue to bless us, continue to do your work among us, God, as we are sent off to uh, do your work in the Magic Valley, God. We ask that your spirit be with our whole community, God, and that we make a huge impact purely for you, not for us. We pray all this in Jesus' holy name. Amen.